as the old morning bugle call of the covered wagon trains dies away among the echoes, another true story of Death Valley Days is brought to you by the Pacific Coast Borax Company, who give you the miracle of borax in three convenient forms. Twenty mule team borax for household use, twenty mule team borax soap chips for washing clothes and dishes, and the new Boraxo for toilet use. Before you become absorbed in the old ranger's story for tonight, we would like to take just a moment of your time to tell you something about Boraxo. Boraxo was created in response to the insistent demands from women. And now, here's the old ranger. Good evening, folks. Good evening, and a hearty welcome to you all. (laughs) And now, old ranger... Uh, what's the story for tonight? Well, it's a story I hardly expect you to believe, but it's the absolute truth, just the same. <laughs> Why, old ranger, you know I believe every word you utter on the air. Say, George, you don't like the way you say on the air. <laughs> <laughs> However, I let it pass this time, and now you just pin back your ears and hark to the story of the burrow that had no name. Well, wouldn't it be a good idea before you start, old ranger, to explain exactly what a burrow is? There may be some of our listeners who don't know. Well, don't know what a burrow is? Well, not by that name, anyway. Sure they do. Why, the word burrow is as common as, as horse. Well, where you come from, maybe. Everywhere. It's not in the encyclopedia. How do you know? Because I looked. When you told us last week about this burrow story, I thought I'd... Well, study up a bit on Burroughs. Oh, steal a march on the audience, eh? <laughs> so you went to the encyclopedia. Yes, and I took down the volume labeled Bray, B-R-A-I, to cast. Bray, well, that was a good thing to look under. <laughs> <laughs> Just the same, the word burrow was nowhere to be found. Maybe you don't know how to spell it. B-U-R-R-O. <laughs> That's right. And your shirt wasn't there? Absolutely. From Elihu Burrett, they jumped right to John Burroughs. Well. So then I turned to Donkey, and all it said there was C Ass. <laughs> <laughs> and all it said there, I suppose, was C Balaam. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you couldn't find the word burrow in your dictionary, George, I'll enlighten you. A burr is the same as a donkey, or a jackass. In the desert, we generally call them jacks for short. They stand about four foot high. Their coats is furry, their ears is long, their tails is sort of like a piece of rope frayed at the end. Their hoofs is small and sharp, but their teeth is big and sharp, and their voices is something fearful. (laughs) There you are. And now since you got a mental picture of the animal, well, let's get going on the yarn. (laughs) The scene opens in the mining camp of Rhyolite. It's the year 1905. Walter Scott Smith, known as Smitty, and his partner, Ole Martin, are negotiating with a feller in Rhyolite for a string of burrows with which to start out into the hills. Now, if you can just fix us up with a couple of good riding burrows. I can give you two of the finest riding burrows in Nevada. Blackjack here and Samson. Mm. How much? Fifty apiece. Fifty? We'll give you thirty. Ah, uh, you go to blazes. Why them pack animals bring thirty-five. Holy smoke. Well, oh, that's highway robbery. We try and buy them somewhere else, then. Thirty-five dollars for a pack burrow? And fifty for a saddle burrow. These two critters is worth it, too. I have rode them both myself, and I know. Why, Blackjack brung me once all the way from Gold Circle to Battle Mountain. A sixty-mile trip in ten hours. And Sam, we'll give you 40 apiece for him. 50 or nothing. I never paid as much as $50 for a burrow in my life. Well, I'll tell you what I can do. I can give you a cheaper pack burrow in place of one of them you picked out. Yeah? Which one? Uh, that one over yonder, sniffing at the pile of tin cans. Now, I could the give you a white him... burrow? Yeah. I'll let you have him for uh, $20. I wouldn't take him as a gift. 15 You think I'd be fool enough to go prospecting with a white burrow? Hey, what's the matter with a white bird? Well, they're unlucky, that's what. Unluckiest thing there is. <laughs> so you don't really believe that, do you? <laughs> we could swing $15. You ain't suggesting that we buy that white jack. Well... Pay $15 for a Jonah, a Jinx, a Hoodoo? Only you're crazy. You must have been out walking in the sun without your hat on. 
He ain't really white, Smitty. He, he's kind of gray. He's as white as you or me. Well, we ain't exactly lilies. I'll make you a price of uh, $12 for him. How's that? You shut up. Now I'm talking to your partner. If he buys that white fur off you, he's no longer my partner. Oh, Smitty. I mean it, Ole. You and me's been prospecting together since Panamint days. We've slept under the same blanket, drunk out of the same canteen, gone 50-50 on every strike we've made. I, I think a heap of you. But if you pay as much as two bits for that... That ill wind yonder, our trails is going to part. So help me. I guess we'll just take four burrows, mister. It was on the second night out. Ole and Smitty were finished with their supper, and Ole went over to feed the leavings to the burrows. All right, I'm coming. One at a time now, what? Why, hello. What's the matter? Am I counting noses right? One, two, three. One of our jacks missing? No, we... Seems we've acquired an extra one. Got five now, huh? Yeah. Well, if those fool greenhorns don't know enough to tie their critters up, they deserve to lose them. Let me have a look. So, huh? it's the white burrow. Well, it's a white burrow. It's the same white burrow that that sharper in Ryle I tried to palm off on us. Oh, now, that ain't likely, Smitty. I recognize him. In the dark, like What's this? more, he recognizes us. Look at that glint in his eye. Oh, I don't see no glint. He's a-grinning at us, gloating over us. Some blasted little devil. You're to blame for this, Ori. It's all your fault. My fault? It's on account of you he's followed us here. And it's up to you now to get rid of him. Well, how? How? You ask me how? Well... We'll fire rocks at him, cuss him, kick him. I wouldn't want to do that. All right, then, I will. No, you leave him to me. I, I'll make it plain to him that he ain't welcome around here. Well, see that you do. Pronto. I'll be washing up the supper thing. All right. I'll hear you, critters. Here's your grub. Now, don't you be so greedy, Samson. Don't you know there's others to share with? You through with that tail yet, Ole? Yep. Then I'll take it and wash it along with the frying pan and... Ole Martin. What's the matter? You fed that burra. Which burra? The white burra. Ah, now, Smitty. You needn't deny it. Look at him licking his lips. Well, that's just... uh... Just some bacon grease he's trying to get off his whiskers. You're imagining things, Smitty. Is that piece of flapjack sticking to his nose, my imagination? Oh, well... You fed that, Burra. And you just promised me you'd get rid of him. I I will, Smitty, honest. Honest. Right away. It's too late. We'll never be rid of him now. That evil little blighter will trail us wherever we go, bringing us nothing but bad luck. Look, he's leaving now. What did I tell you? Yeah. He's walking right off into the desert. You see, he's savvies. He's savvies that supper is over. But he'll be back. You just wait and see. The next morning, when Ole opened his eyes, he, he looked around fearfully. Then he breathed a sigh of relief. The white burrow was nowhere in sight. <laughs> With breakfast over, the partners packed up their outfit and moved down farther into the hills. That evening, they, they made a dry camp, and while Smitty unpacked and prepared supper, Ole went off with one of the pack burrows to rustle a supply of firewood. It was almost dark when he returned. I begun to think he was lost or had struck gold, maybe. No, just that wood was scarce. This critter wanted to lay down all the time. Mm-hmm. Hey, what smells so good? I got a treat for us tonight. Well, what is it? Fresh bread. No. Uh-huh. Why, you old son of a gun. You're too low. Well, where are they? In the Dutch oven, keeping warm. Mm-hmm. Fresh bread. Yes, sir. Hey, when it's my turn to do the cooking, I produce real grub. Well, if you're casting aspersions on my meal, hey, what else are we going to have? Mulligan, coffee, Dawson plum. With a loaf of bread apiece? Why, that ought to do it. Hey, we're saving one of them loaves for tomorrow. Ah, don't be stingy. You call a a half a loaf of bread stingy? Say, them big loaves. Well, I could eat a whole batch without any help. I'm hungry as a wolf. Well, everything's ready as soon as you are. Well, then, let's eat. All right. I'll be decent up the mulligan. And I'll get the bread out of the oven. 
That oven was a good buy, Ole. Yeah. Wait till you see the crust of that bread. A nice, even, golden brown. <laughs> Where'd you say it was, Smitty? What? The bread. Why, right where you're looking, in the oven. No, it ain't. Oh, sure it is. I tell you, it ain't. The oven's empty. Say, what have you been drinking? Well, if you don't believe me, come on and look for yourself. Oh, you never could find nothing, no way. But... <coughs> See? Well, I'll be darned. Where'd you put them? Me? You sneaked them out and hit them. I know. I, I did nothing of the kind. Come on, tell me. Why, well, ain't so much as laid eyes on them loaves of bread, Smitty, I swear. Well, somebody's took them. They was in this oven here not five minutes ago. You sure? Of course I'm sure. I come over and took a look at them to see if they was done just before you come in. You don't suppose one of the burras could have stolen them, do you, while your back was turned? Oh, how could a burra lift up the lid of a Dutch oven and carry off two loaves of bread? You'd have to be educated. Blame this thing I ever knowed. Two loaves of bread disappearing into thin air. Maybe you didn't bake them at all. Maybe you just dreamed them. You smelled them, didn't you? Well, that's right, I did. Holy. Yeah? Holy. Look. Over yonder. Where I'm pointing. What's that sticking out from behind that big boulder? Why, it looks like a couple of long cactus leaves. It's... A pair of ears. Maybe. White ears. Only it's... Now, don't jump at conclusions, Smitty. Let's go see. I told you this had happened. I know he'd turn up again. There, and you see, I was right. Sure enough, it's old white. Don't! What's the matter? Don't you dare give him a name. Well, why not? Don't you know that once you name an animal, he's yours? Well, who says so? Why, it stands to reason. You mean... So long as he's got no name, he's a stray, a stranger, a rank outsider. But just you give him a name, any kind of a name, and he belongs to you. <laughs> I see. What are you laughing at? For a stranger, this fella has certainly made him... My... Bread. What's left of it? My beautiful, fresh, hot, crusty bread. Oh, you varmint, you. You thieving little son of a rustler. You ferocious fuzz tail. Careful, Smitty. Don't call him names. Calling him names ain't the same as giving him names. I can call him all the names in the dictionary if I feel like it. Yes, and I do. Yeah. Grin. Grin, you lop-eared, sawed-off limb of Satan. You white curse. You evil-eyed, aspenurious imp of darkness. You... Reckon I'll hit the hay. Well, you can turn in if you want to. I'm going to sit up a while longer. What for? Oh, I just ain't sleepy, that's all. Uh, I'll smoke another pipe full and... And wait up for him, huh? Wait for who? You can't fool me, Ole. You're worrying about that burrow. Do you suppose something has happened to him, Smitty? Well, let's hope so. Then maybe our luck will change. Oh, I can't see as we've had any bad luck on this trip. No, nor any good luck, neither. We ain't smell the smell of ore. Uh, Ole, look. Where? Coming toward us. Out of the night. What? It's... It's him. The prodigal. Hush, hush, will you? If he hears you... Well, that ain't him. Why, if it was him, he'd be praying by now. That burrow ain't making a sound. It's his ghost, then. Come to hand us. It's the spitting image. You're right, Smitty, it is. His ghost? No, him, himself. What's he... What's he walking so queer for? Why, he's sick or, or hurt or something. Uh, what is it, old boy? What's happened? Come over here by the fire where I can see you. His eyes is closed tight. And his head's all swelled up. Say, what in tarnation? Looks queer around the jaw, too. Open your mouth, fella, and let's have a look. Open your mouth. <laughs> Won't, huh? He can't. His teeth is clenched. What is it, lockjaw? Rattlesnake bite. Huh? Look, here on the nose, you can see where the fangs went in. Yes, sir. He's done for, then. We may be able to save him. Save him? We'll do our best anyhow. Hey, are you crazy? Where's that permanganate of potassium? Holy! Oh, here it is. What are you going to do? Rub it in the wound, of course. Holy, you... Stand still, old fella. I won't hurt you. Now, this is going to do you good. <laughs> Holy, have you went clean out of your senses? This critter's a jinx, 
A hoodoo. We can't just stand by and watch him die. Well, why not? We don't want him. Nobody wants him. That makes no difference. He's a poor, dumb animal, and he's in misery. Then put him out of it. Well, just what I'm trying to do. Now, I mean shoot him, you fool. No. All right. You put that gun down. You quit working on him then. I can't, Smitty. Don't you see I can't? Why can't you? He come to us for help. He trusts us. Trusts us? A white burrow. Well, it ain't his fault he was born white. Only you look. His eyes is opening. The potassium permanganate is beginning to work. Oh. His jaw is loosening. Now, if I can just get some whiskey down him. Hey, that's my whiskey. It's our whiskey. Here, boy. Only, I've stood for a lot. But if you pour so much as one drop of that liquor down that white varmint's throat, uh, we bust up, you and me. Tip your head back. That's it. Now, let me stick the bottle in between your teeth. So, holy, I'm warning you. A little more. <coughs> there. Now we're through. Yeah. We're through, Smitty. You can take your pick of the burrs, Oli, and your share of the grub and things. You're not going on? No. I'm going back to Rhyolite. And now, uh, ten days later, in a brilliantly lighted saloon in Rhyolite, we find Smitty doing his best to forget about Ole in the White Borough. He's in his second childhood, that's all you can say for him. Yeah, yeah, have another. I don't mind if I do. Yes, sir. Only needs a nurse or a keeper or something. He <laughs> oh, 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 oh. What's the matter? How oh, can you beat that? A burra walking straight in through the swinging doors. He's looking for a drink. See, he's heading straight for the bar. <laughs> Jumping Jehoshaphat. It's the white burra. What? Your burra I was just telling you about. He's come back to hoodoo me again. Ah, you're just seeing things. Here, have another drink. It's him, I tell you. Look. Look at that scar on his nose. That's where the rattlesnake bit him. Must mean all he's back then. Funny he'd come back so soon. Said he was going to stay out another 30 days. Say, maybe located something. Uh Uh-uh. Not with that white burra along. Get away from me, you unlucky varmint. What do you mean, grabbing hold of my coat? Let go of me, you hear me? Get away from me. Get out of here. Go on back to that old fool, Oli. Yeah. That done it. He knows Oli's name, all yeah. right, don't he? Why wouldn't he? Well, why don't you go? What are you standing there for? What are you looking at me like that for? Take them eyes off of me, you, you hear me? Say Say, he's trying to tell you something, Smitty. Oh, I ain't interested. Yeah, uh, something's troubling him. Yeah, his conscience, maybe. You don't suppose something could have went wrong, do you, with Ole? Be his own fault if it did. I just wondered. Well, what could have happened to him? Oh, nothing most likely. Oh, I... Ole's an old desert rat. He knows all the water holes in Nevada. Got plenty of grub. Well, that being the case, how about another drink? Uh, no... No, I've had enough, thanks. This one's on the house. Uh, I can't stop now. All right, you. Where is he? Is he here in Rhyolite? No? Then show me where. Hey, Smitty, where are you going? Wherever this critter takes me. You mean I'm going to look up Oli. Well, it was just about sundown of the third day out that they found him, laying unconscious at the bottom of a narrow canyon. Oli. Thank the Lord he's still alive. Oli. Huh? It's me, Smitty. Smitty? I I come as fast as I could, (laughs) Oli. He brung you here, did he? Straight as a die. Good boy. He he turned up in Rhyolite. Just like I told him to. I, I knowed right off that something was wrong. What happened, Ole? Where you hurt? My leg. Broke? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can see. I was following some flute up the mountain. It was getting dark. Like a fool, I didn't want to stop and... Somehow or other, I lost my foot and then... And fell. Clear down here? Yeah. Oh. oh. It's a wonder you wasn't killed outright. Uh, shows how tough I am. <laughs> Gosh. I knowed I could never make it back to town, even if I had a burr to ride. What happened to you, burrs? Uh, they went off. I don't know where. All but this fellow. <laughs> He stuck by me until I, I sent him away to get help. I figured I had enough water to last me till you could get here, if you'd come. Why, well, Olier, of course I'd come. I, I didn't know. I was sort of afraid. You think I'd let you die out here alone? Alone with my samples. Huh? <laughs> They're around here, Summers. Samples? Of war. I run across something mighty good, Smitty. Here. Here's one of them. Take a good look at it. Let me see. High grade. I'll say. Real picture of rock. I'll bet she has says a trip to Europe for time. If we wanted to go to Europe, which we don't. We? You and me. Oh, but... But, Ole, I... We're still partners, ain't we, Smitty? Ole, I... I don't deserve it after... After the way I treated you. Heck, you just saved my life, didn't you? It wasn't me. It was the White Borough. The White Borough. Ole. Yeah? Have you named him yet? No. Then let's give him a name. Now. Smitty. After all, he's earned it. You know what it'll mean, don't you? That he'll be ours for the rest of his life. Yes. All right. I'm willing You have been listening to another true story of Death Valley Days, brought to you by the Pacific Coast Borax Company. Producers of 20 Mule Team Borax for household use, 20 Mule Team Borax soap chips in the big blue and yellow sunshine box for washing clothes and dishes, and the new Boraxo for toilet use. Your grocer can supply you with all of these products. All of them are inexpensive. All of them bring the miracle of Borax into your home in convenient form. The next week, the old ranger's tale concerns Joshua Norton, emperor of the United States and protector of Mexico. You must hear it, so be sure to plan joining us at this same hour next week over this station. <laughs>